A bit of background, what is force logging? Well, most of us in DBAs have things called standby databases. And if not, you should have one because they're awesome. They're so powerful, you can do all sorts of cool things with them. But the way a standby database is kept in sync with the primary is by the transmission of redo. As changes occur in the primary, they get transmitted by the redo logs over to the standby and the standby is kept up to date in effectively doing a database recovery in real time. The problem of course is, is one of the things that we support in the database for some time is the ability to do operations that don't generate redo. I could do alter table ask tom.t no logging, and then I could do a big insert, a direct mode insert into it, and none of those changes will be logged. That's a bit of a drama when we come back to trying to get that information over to the standby database. And in fact, the database will even log it in a in beta the data file. It'll say, yes, you've done an operation. It calls them unrecoverable, which is simply a historical name. But it actually says, you've done a no logging operation on the 17th of June, and therefore that data is not completely logged. And what happens? You've now got some gaps. The information that got sent to, is being sent over to your standby is incomplete because that big chunk of rows we just created in the asktom.t table were not logged and therefore the logs didn't make it over to the standby. And ultimately, if you actually try query that table one day on the standby, you get an error because that information simply was not sufficient to keep the standby up to date. The error we report back is that you've actually got a database corruption. And of course, that's not fun for DBAs because what if it's a real, I mean, this is a real corruption, but it's due to a no logging operation. But as a DBA, what you don't want to do is every day wake up to an error message saying you have a corruption in your database because it may have been a corruption due to a no logging operation. It may be a genuine corruption due to, for example, an OS problem or a disk problem. And you have to make that decision every single day. That's a stressful time for all of us. So we invented this back in Oracle 9, force logging, alter database force logging. It's pretty simple. We don't care if you try to do a no logging operation, we simply ignore it. Everything is logged and therefore the redo is always going to be complete. The question that came in was how can I bypass that? That's a bit of a weird choice to me because the only reason you put on force logging is because you're saying it's not worth my while to bypass it. It's, you know, there's no option, no option to bypass force logging because that's why it's called force logging. The, the force should be the, the hint there. So what are your options? Why would we want to bypass logging? Typically because we're generating a lot of redo for say a big bulk operation. Let's say I'm doing a big bulk load. The first operation is, you know, this may sound weird, is have a chat with the person that set force logging. That might be a colleague of your DBAs. If you're a developer, it might be your DBA in another room, but have a, have a dialogue. You know, it might well be the case that you turn off force logging for a, a small part of the operation you know, and then do your bulk load if it's a one-off and then turn force logging back on, but at least have some communication with your DBA. In 12C, it's actually not too hard. And so you might be able to convince the DBAs on your team to say, we're not gonna run force logging because if my standby stops, unlike back in the old days, you know, it's actually not too difficult to actually reinstate the standby. It's simply cancel, you can see that the commands are actually, you know, what is it, one, seven lines? We simply cancel the recovery, Recover database from service, that's a really cool thing in 12C onwards. Restore the standby control file, recover the standby and off you go. You don't even know to know which data file, it's just gonna take care of looking after the ones that are needed. That's pretty cool. In 18C, it's a one-liner. How cool is that? Just recover standby database from service. So maybe you could sacrifice the forced logging in order to actually take advantage of these easy commands to actually reinstate the standby and pick up just the changes required. Maybe that's all you need to do. Second option is maybe transportable table space. If you can't have forced logging turned off on your primary, maybe you create a, a temporary database, just you know, a small database that doesn't have forced logging on, do your big database loads into there, and then transport the data files to both the primary and the standby. When you do the data pump import, which actually just copies the metadata into the primary, that will actually populate obviously over to the standby because metadata changes will be populated via redo. You've effectively transported a table space of your bulk load data into both nodes without having that huge logging overhead. The third one is if it's part of a load process and you need to use that table just in the same session, maybe a global temporary table is all you need. Maybe that'll cover off the option for you as well. Mm -hmm.